Yes, people, it is match day. Football is back. And the mighty Tractor Boys, we're at home today as we take on former Premier League, Champions League, FA Cup, UEFA Cup, Carabao Cup, World Club Cup. I think they've won all the bloody cups. But former winners, Liverpool FC. Before we get into anything, you know we got to do the shout outs. Massive shout outs to Angel Care Homes for all your care needs in the Black Country and Birmingham area. Massive shout outs to Mark Darcy for all your formal menswear needs. And of course, the Desi Ballers highlight all South Asians at all levels of the beautiful game. I'll put their details in the description. Make sure you check them out. But let's get to it then. And of course, if you're brand new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you've been here before and you are subscribed, don't forget to smash that like button. Our last Premier League game was 22 years ago against Liverpool. It was away at Anfield. We know how that ended. It was a 5-0 loss. A certain John Arnorisa and Nicholas Anelka were on the score sheets. But do you know which former Liverpool player was playing his last professional game before going into management? Put your answers in the comments. But yeah, man, 22 years in the making. Premier League football is back and I'm buzzing. I said in my preview, and if you haven't checked it out, I'll put the details in the description on that. Make sure you check the match preview out. But I said then that I thought we would do well this season. So for me, I think it's going to be the 4-2-3-1 that we saw from last season. So in goal, I think, yes, Mulrich has been given a number one spot. Looks very good goalkeeper. Good with his feet. Massive presence in the box and has made some good uh, kind of saves during pre-season. So excited to see how he does this season. Leif Davis will be the best left back in the Premier League. You can bookmark this or whatever. Right back, I think, yeah, it's uh, Ben Johnson. He's had a really good pre-season, looks really good. Defensively very sound and, and, and has got forward. Especially against Nice, I thought he got forward quite well. Central defence. Now, this is a, you know one where we've got Twan Zabi, proven Premier League experience. Fridge, who I think you know his pace is going to be key in this league and has had a really good pre-season. But for me, and of course Burgess, um, but for me, I think what we're going to have is we're going to have Luke Wolfenden and he'll be partnered by none other than future England centre-back, Mr Greaves. So in the middle, I think, yes, he signed the other day, but a player of his calibre, you don't leave him on the bench. He's played a lot of football during pre-season, so his sharpness and fitness should be there. So I think it makes sense. You've got to throw Calvin Phillips in. And of course, him next to Captain Fantastic, the midfield general, Mr. Sammy Morsey. Up front, in terms of our attacking three, again, we know we've got Broadhead out um, and we know obviously Schmoditz has just joined. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Sammy Schmoditz come off the bench which means Starboy, I mean, Starboy Amari is going to start most games. He's, he's that good, right? And he's going to be one of our standout players of the season. But Starboy Amari starting on the left. Yes, we know he likes to play on the right and cut in. But I think you play him on the left. You play a certain Mr... I can't believe it. You play a certain Mr. Wes Burns on the right-hand side. And, of course, 10 has to be our number 10. We know he starts the seasons very well. Yes, there was questions about did he did his form fade off. I think genuinely it was down to fatigue. He played a lot of football, but yeah, Mr. Connor Chaplin in the number 10 role. And up front, you know, it makes sense. You've just got to play Mr. Liam Delap. So it's getting close to kickoff. I'm going to grab a bite to eat and catch up with a few town fans. Like I said, I'm absolutely looking forward to it. I didn't think this day would come so quick. I was like a kid before Christmas. I couldn't sleep last night, counting down the hours till till I got here. I'm gonna soak up all the beautiful atmosphere, and yeah, man, just buzzing to be back. I will catch you in there.
to go and team work and stay better this Gold Division is keep today. today. Every fan that's more blue and one.
move by number 10, Connor Jacklin. The move by number 11, Marcus Harden. At least we want a result. Oh, it's so wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Definitely positives. There's more positives. Who were, than negatives. who were the two or three standout players for you today? Lamari had a solid game. I think Davis did well. Davis did very well. Um, yeah, yeah. Cha Chaplin, I, I loved his, his closing he, down. Yeah, he, 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 he loves that. Down. He loves that. What, what about our? Um, I've been told by neutrals that we're a League One team. You know, we've got a bit of an aging midfield. <laughs> What about that midfield engine, Mr. Sammy Morsi and the Massimo Luongo? Yeah, he did it. I don't think he put a foot wrong, if I'm honest. There was no he didn't get a yellow, did he? There was lots of yellows and Sammy didn't get the... He didn't even get a yellow. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, he's got loads of positive take, that, take from that. He, he was calm on the ball. Played a lot of people in. Yeah. I, I think I counted two, maybe three clear-cut chances where he's played the ball over the top. Which and Sammy, touch. I think Sammy's really improved it. Yeah, on another occasion, we would have scored those passes Sam Pate played in. Ipswich Town in the Premier League. Survival, relegation, or better than survival and look to that kind of... I reckon it'll be a good, yeah, it'll be a good fight for the second part of the table. I like that, I like that. three parts, Ipswich can comfortably be fighting the, the top, the second area of the league. It's a long old season. So what we're saying about that one then, peeps? Like always, make sure you smash this like button on this video we want to build up this channel it's premier league and if you're brand new here hit that subscribe button turn the notification bell on and if you ain't brand new and you ain't subscribed then why not click subscribe like i said it's gonna be a big big season and to everyone that has subbed 
love to you man let's continue to grow this channel we want to hit a thousand subscribers that's what we're aiming for and we're hoping to get that by december this year but let's get to it then so after 22 years away ipswich town were finally back in the premier league just three years ago i remember standing in that north stand celebrating macaulay bond as he scored in the 91st minute on the opening day to get us a point it's not three points it was a point it was a draw against Morecambe three years later we're going up against one of the biggest teams in world football a team that's won everything there's to win and we're not playing their under 21s in the Papa John's we're not playing their second team in the Carabao Cup we're playing their first 11 in the Premier League and you know what that first half I thought we did really well but yeah, let's be clear as well, Liverpool in that first half were nowhere near their best. In the second half, yes, Liverpool come out with a plan and they stepped it up their level. But the goals, like, it was five minutes, like, got to the hour mark and then within, by the 65th minute, they've scored two goals. And if you look at both of the goals, particularly the first one, the first one is just like individual brilliance from Salah. We defended well and I'll go on to the performances later. We created chances, we still had our game plan, you know, get these two games out of the way in arguably the best time as well, because why not play him now while you're still building your squad? 31st of August comes round, the transfer window closes, you play that Fulham game and then you have the international break and you start building the team and you have, you know, I think, the is it the Brighton game after the international break? I think that's where we're going to see a real difference. That's where we're going to see, okay, cool, this is what we're here to do. But yeah, very encouraging signs, man. And, you know, happy times to be an Ipswich fan. So let's get to some player ratings then. I thought all players 1 to 11, in fact, even the subs and what? Did we have five subs? So all 16 players were brilliant. You know, really did all the positive stuff that we've seen them doing in the championship and the league one of the last few seasons. So Leif Davis... I said he'd step up to the Prem, no problem, and he proved that. Yes, he didn't get as many attacking options, but, you know, he did obviously play the lap through for that, what could, should have been a penalty. Um, although I understand, and I haven't seen the replay, but I understand that maybe Davis was... I think maybe Davis's fingernail was offside or something. Who knows? The defensive side of, of Davis's game was really good as well. Made some really good tackles and recoveries. Um, and really put his body on the line as well. Wolfenden, man, I need to shout him out because there's been a lot of noise on socials about is he good enough, can he step up, this, that and the other. And you know what? Just the journey Wolf he's had just at, at this club, you know. Been here his whole career, one of our own, local lad, you know, went through the ranks, went out on loan, come back and should have been in the League One team, but... You know, Cookie didn't like him for whatever reason. Bombed out an exile by Cookie. Then finds him back in the, then finds himself back under McKenna. And he's been, you know, phenomenal at times. You know, he he was alert all the time. Recovery was good, blocking, you know, positional sense as well. And yeah, you know, we know Wolfie is this ball playing defender and he's happy to pass it around. But equally Wolfenden's a very good centre back as well. Let's not forget that. And Jacob Greaves, like Leif Davis, and, and possibly Wolfie as well, but definitely Jacob Greaves is going to the World Cup in America in 2026 and the Euros after that. Like, he's phenomenal. I said it during pre season. I saw one of the games. I saw a few of them, but on, on, the, on one of the games I saw, I was like, he's, he's different. He's different, man. And he's only like, I think he's only like 23, he's young. Um, it's, I'll tell you what, that 15 million or whatever we're paying, even if it goes up to 18 or 20 or whatever, seems like an absolute steal. Like if Harry Maguire went from Leicester for 80 million pounds, give it a couple of years, there's no reason that if we're an established team like Leicester were as well, that Greaves doesn't go for a similar fee or more. The lap, I thought he did really well. Um, He's had a bit of a quiet pre-season, but, you know, each game is getting better and better. And I thought, you know, the game against Liverpool now, he was just, he was really good. Running power, 
you know, playing a lone striker against, you know, these types of players is always going to be a hard job. And there was this one point, I think, where Walton pings it out to him and you're thinking, OK, just, just hold it or play it back or whatever. And he just takes a beautiful touch and off he goes. Um, but he was a real bright spark and really looking forward to seeing how he progresses throughout the season. I think it's a case of sooner rather than later of when he opens his account. Um, certainly looks dangerous. Walton, obviously coming very last minute from Murich. I think Murich had a bit of a calf injury. Um, I, I, I didn't see him limping too much after, so maybe it's not a, a big thing. He might be back sooner rather than later. But Murich, don't worry, my bro. Take your time and rest up properly. Do not rush coming back because we don't want to repeat injury. Because guess what? we got super Christian Walton in goal. You obviously know how good Walton's shot stopping is. There had been some questions about, you know, his presence in the area and how he commands his area and his distribution and like passing. I thought the area thing, put that to bed now. Like he made that very clear, it's my area. Um, he really commanded his box really well. Shot stopping again, made some brilliant shots, you know, kept it only 2-0. Amari Hutchinson is star boy, mate. He's one of those players that this season you're gonna talk about all the bright sparks. And I said it before, I said it on this on the pod on the preview. And again, if you haven't seen the preview, I'll put the link in the description. But I said Amari is star boy, Amari's gonna shine, Amari is gonna have a lot of people saying, I need this guy in my team. You know, £20 million, absolute steal. He's worth at least double that by the end of the season, if not closer to £60 million. Sammy Morsey, he's arrived in the Prem. And what a way to play. We saw the Egyptian King and Mo Salah on the pitch together. And that was wicked to see as well. But yeah, man, it was a really good performance from Sammy Morsey. You know, a player that's come through the the, the ranks, like many players. Um, but yeah, he's arrived and he showed that he's a Premier League player, man. He showed that he could do this. And, you know, sometimes when a player it gets a bit older or whatever, they're like, oh, you know, the stats, you know, the, the performances drop off or whatever. That's not been the case with Sammy. Like, Sammy had the, arguably his best season last season with us. And he might even have a better season this season. I'm not saying he'll get as many goals and assists or, you know, stuff like that. But it will certainly be, the like last season, be one of the best players on the pitch week in, week out. So, yeah, man, really good to see Sammy Morsey as a Premier League player, man. I just want to do a quick honourable mention to um, Ali Alhamidi, the, uh, you know, Iraqi-born scouser. Um, it was I understand he's a, he's a boyhood Liverpool fan, um, so he got his his run out. But in doing so, he became a history maker and became the first Iraqi to ever play in the Premier League. So congratulations to Ali and his family and friends, and of course to to um, all our Iraqi friends as well around the world. So yeah, man, congratulations, Ali Alhamdi. Programs. So I'm gonna collect the programs this season. Um, obviously special season they're a bit funky this one um, and I got a little thing here for the Liverpool uh, fans which is the um, the 97 logo the Justice for 97 logo um, to pay kind of respect for the, the tragedy and the loss of uh, those 97 lives in the Hillsborough disaster um, but the programme itself it's, it's done by a company called Call Me Ted you know like the song everybody calls me Ted um, the social and basically what it says is, um, Call Me Ted is showcasing local creative talent by working on different artists to create a unique gig style poster design for each of our Premier League home fixtures. We'll then be featuring them on our home covers. So that's what they're doing. They're a company called, like I said, Call Me Ted, um, and they can be found on all socials at Call Me Ted ITFC. But yeah, man. Real positive game, lots to take from it. I think, you know, a couple more additions that we'll get in. We've got a couple of signings coming in. I saw Ashton after the game. It did look like he had a big tub of cooking oil. So you know what that means. 
So yeah, man. On to City next week. And I'll see you there.